Welcome back to another episode of Lulu's Perch. In this episode, we're going to be decoding the sacred geometry of the universe, the mathematical language of God, the natural mosaic of Mother Nature herself to find the patterns in nature. And it's all hidden in the core of this apple. Let's go have our minds blown. Have you ever just been strolling through the garden with all its flowers, trees and waterfalls and asked yourself, what does it all mean? What kind of a crazy place is this? Ah, good question, Donald. Well, amongst all this natural chaos, there's actually a hidden pattern, which if we can understand just a little bit, we can dramatically improve our gardens, enrich and unify entire cultures, and send the human race down a revolutionary road of technological advancements beyond our wildest dreams. More on that later, but for now, let's go cover the basics. What are patterns? Patterns are edges which are created when two forces meet and interact. For example, where the ocean meets the shoreline, where hot air meets cold, or where a seed meets the soil. Patterns allow us to identify flows of energy and beckon us to understand how to redirect, stop, or more importantly, harness those flows of energy. Well, we've all learned about the basic two-dimensional shapes of geometry in our elementary school, but it's not until these shapes start interacting in 3D, ow, that we begin to see the patterns in nature. Let's jump down the rabbit hole. Everything starts at a point, an egg, a seed, a big bang like the flash of light as a sperm enters the ovum. Ooh. To grow, we need to multiply exactly like cell division, which gives us another circle. If we continue to grow outwards and around, we achieve the egg of life, which under a microscope looks like this. Pretty neat, huh? On a side note, let's not forget that this complex symbol can be found in ancient texts all over the world. Unlike a drawing in an ancient textbook, nature is in perpetual motion, a constant whirlwind of movement. So what happens if we decode the next part of this pattern by spinning it? It turns into a 3D shape, a delicious donut of space and time, the torus. Now when we cut this torus in half, we arrive at the core model, or the apple core model of all permaculture patterns. Told ya. Now let's return back to the seed. It germinates and blossoms into roots and branches which shed their leaves to be absorbed by the roots again, who then transfer the energy back up to the leaves to be photosynthesized before dropping again. It's a perpetual cycle. This core model can be found in fruits and vegetables. It gives birth to all patterns in nature. For example, the wave. We see ocean waves, sound waves, light waves, microwaves, radio waves. Waves are a transfer of energy from one place to another. The spiral. We see spirals in tornadoes, snail shells, sunflowers, pine cones, pineapples, ram horns, our DNA, and even galaxies. Now combine wave and spiral patterns and we create streamlines. The Ekmans in the wind, the eddies in the river flows. By applying Murray's law, we can see the fractal patterns of dendritic branches in rivers, trees, roots, human lungs, circulatory systems of veins and arteries, the spreading of mycelium fungus. And finally, tessellations of repeating patterns like a mosaic of fish scales, snake skin, honeycomb hives, the human skeletal system, and its 33 tessellating vertebrae which make up the spinal cord, that electrical superhighway for our central nervous system, and dimethyltryptamine, aka the spirit molecule. You might have to Google that one. So our reality is governed by an intricate system of patterns. This is some mind-melting matrix material we're talking about here. What do we do with all this ancient knowledge? Well, we plug in and apply these patterns of nature to our garden. First, we can follow the dendritic branches of water flow so we can assess where we should dig our wave-like contour swales along the landscape. 
Then we can plant our fruit trees in tessellations of companion plants until we have a self-sustainable guild. We can then use spiral patterns to create herb spirals and can crenulate our ponds and keyhole our veggie beds to create more edges for food production. We can also install turbines where the rivers streamline and eddy for unlimited power supply. But it doesn't stop at our garden. We can use patterns in nature to invent new technologies and redesign entire cities. It's called biomimicry. If we split the word in two, bio means life and mimic means to imitate something. So biomimicry is the observation of patterns in nature to solve modern day problems. I mean, let's think about it. Nature has already solved half the problems we're having today about 3.8 billion years ago. So we're essentially copying its work uh, without the intellectual property laws. For instance, by observing the Stenocara beetle in the desert, we noticed it was collecting water on the pattern surface of its back. If we can recreate that pattern surface on a large scale, we could provide fresh drinking water to people and also re-green the desert. Or the Galapagos shark whose skin tessellations repel bacteria and disease. It can be fabricated and placed onto hospital surfaces and surgical equipment to reduce infections. The possibilities are endless. We can honeycomb our tires to make them unpoppable, mimic lilies for turbines, create self-cleaning lotus leaf fabrics, and even make our maglev trains more aerodynamic by copying the beak of a kingfisher. And my personal favorite, Fungus, hear me out. As Paul Stemitz will tell you, fungus is intelligent. In fact, it's so smart that it improved the Tokyo subway system with its pathfinding abilities. This stuff can clean oil spills, replace styrofoam packaging, create durable leather clothing, and connects trees so that they can talk to each other. I'm telling you, patterns in nature, biomimicry, fungus, it's the way of the future. Plus, it opens up an entirely new world in the creative arts departments, living art, philosophy, and I even wrote a slam poetry about it. Links in the description below. But seriously, this is something we can all get behind, whether you're east, west, left, right, religious or atheist, the patterns in nature bind us all. Om. And with this unifying knowledge, we can evolve as a civilization and move towards the next step. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I got a lot of weird looks at the grocery store while I was filming this one. So if you could like and subscribe, that'd be absolutely fantastic. If you know of any other applications for patterns in nature or biomimicry in the garden, I want to hear about them in the description box below. But for now, try get outside, observe a pattern in nature, and create something beautiful. And I'll see you in the next chapter. Catch ya.